here we're going to do some vector loop diagram examples of real mechanisms and machines. So we've got the dump truck and the elliptical runner, and we'll figure out how to draw the vector loop diagram and derive the equations, identify knowns, unknowns, etc. We'll start with the dump truck. So for this one, we need to figure out how many links, joints, degrees of freedom, all of that stuff. So first, let's draw the kinematic diagram. So we know we've got a revolute joint here, we've got one here, and we've got one here. Now we're gonna say that the base of the truck is the ground. So ignore the fact that the truck can drive and just assume it's parked in one spot. So then there's that pneumatic cylinder right there, which will have a prismatic joint because that extends. And then we have the box part, which is another link. So if we count up how many links and how many joints, then we have one, two, three, four links, and then joints. We've got one, two, three revolute joints and a fourth joint that's prismatic. So we'll say joints equals four, links equals four. So in this, we can figure out how many vector loops we need using the loop equation. L equals J minus L plus one, which equals one. So we'll need one vector loop, and then we calculate degrees of freedom to see how many inputs we get. So let's use Grubler's equation for mobility. M equals three L minus one minus two J. So that's gonna be three times three minus two times four, which is nine minus eight, which also equals one. Okay, so we're gonna get one input, and then one loop. So now we need to actually draw these vector loops, but first we'll assign a coordinate frame. And we'll say that coordinate frame X goes along the ground. So here's the X direction and Y goes perpendicular. And if we draw the arrows, we need to connect the dots. So, First arrow, we'll say this is R1. Then we'll draw another arrow here, say that's R2. Remember the direction of the arrows nor the naming convention matters as long as the equations match the diagram. So for the first one, we just need to connect the dots. So we'll go like this and call that R3. So we just need to connect the dots. So we don't need to make that two vectors, even though it's two links. It only needs to be one vector because we don't really care where that middle point is. So, okay, so step one was to assign the coordinate frame. Step two was to draw the loop diagram. So now let's make sure what we have an angle assigned. Here's theta two, here's theta three. So we'll write the vector loop equation and we need to pick which way to go around the loop. Well, let's go counterclockwise. So vector loop equation. R1 plus R2 minus R3 equals zero. So then we need to split this up into scalars. So the position scalars will get X and a Y. So X, Y, and in this case, we'll have R1 times cosine of theta one. because so we're going, we go positive in the direction of the arrow for R1, in the direction of the arrow for R2, against the arrow direction for R3. So that's how those signs came out. Now R1 is only in the x direction. 
So we'll only put in X equation, R1. And then we have plus R2, C2 minus R3, C3 equals zero. And then the Y direction, R1 doesn't count. So we'll just have R2, S2 minus R3, S3 equals zero. Then we need to get knowns, unknowns, inputs, constraints. This one has no constraints. So we'll just get knowns. So those are all the things that don't change. As far as link lengths go, we know R1 and we know R2 because those do not physically change size. So R1, R2, and as far as angles go, we know theta one because it's flat, it's the truck bed. Now for unknowns, let's see. Well, R3 stretches, it can extend and contract because that's a cylinder. So R3 is unknown. And then the angle of R3 and the angle of R2, theta three and theta two, those also change. So we'll put those here. Theta two, theta three are unknowns. So then finally we need the input. We get, saw that we got one input, one degree of freedom. And here it's obvious that cylinder is what expands and contracts. So the cylinder is the input. R3 becomes the input. So that settles it for the dump truck. Now for the elliptical runner, this one is a little bit trickier. So we're gonna make a dot right here in the middle because that is the part that the disc rotates around. So let's mark out our joints. Okay, so we'll have revolute joint, revolute joints, this is one, two, there's another revolute joint here that's three, and then another one here where it's attached to the frame, so that's four. So now connecting these with links. So here is one, the radius. So this entire disc is one, but we only need to draw a single line for it because we're connecting the two joints. So that's link one. And then here we can have link two, which as you can see is curved, but really we just need to connect the joints. So schematically, We'll draw us a straight line. That's link two. And then link three connects joints three and four. Again, we can schematically draw that as a straight line. So that's three. And then the frame is going to be a fourth link. So you can see that the frame basically kind of goes like this down to the side, up. So all of this is ground. So that is the fourth link. So let's see, we've got J equals four, four joints, they're all revolute. And then we've got L equals four, four links. So since this has four links and four joints, then it should also have one loop and one degree of freedom, just like the dump truck had. So L equals one, mobility equals one. And, didn't, and so now that we've got this diagram, we need to assign some vectors. Well, let's see theta, We'll say R1 is this first link. R2 is the second link. R3 is the third link. And now the ground um, will actually be three different vectors because you can see it has three different lines on it. So we'll say this is um, maybe that's R5, 
this down here is R4. And then this one here is R6. So again, the direction of the arrows does not matter. It's generally easier to put things going up and to the right, um, but that's not required as long as your equations match your diagram. And then we need a coordinate frame here. So we'll put the origin of the coordinate frame. We could put it on any fixed point. So really it could go anywhere on the ground, but we'll put it at the bottom left corner. So X will go along the ground, starts here. So X goes in this direction and you see X is not flat. Um, it's angled a little bit, but that's okay because we're trying to make the math easy and we're going to make X point along the ground. The equations will still work out. And then Y is 90 degrees to that. So let's go around the loop and let's go around this one clockwise. So we need to write a vector loop equation. So here, starting at the origin, we went with R5 along R1, go along R2, along R3. So all of those are positive. And then we'll go reverse arrow for R6 and R4. So those are negative. So let's write those out. R5 plus R1 plus R2 plus R3 minus R6 minus R4 equals zero. And so this equation is correct, um, although usually we write it in numerical order. So let's rearrange so that R1 is first and R6 is last. So we'll say R1 plus R2 plus R3 minus R4 plus R5 minus R6 equals zero. So now let's split this up into position scalars. We need to get the X and the Y. Well, there are a lot of vectors there, but some of them only point in X or only in Y. So that will cut down on the number of variables that we end up with in the equations. So in the X direction, we'll have R4 only going in X, and then we'll have cosine components of R1, R2, and R3. So that equation will look like this. R1, C1 plus R2, C2 plus R3, C3 minus R4 equals zero. And then in the Y direction, R5 and R6 point only in Y, so we don't need to put their angles in, but then we'll have the sine components for R1, R2, and R3. So R1, S1 plus R2, S2 plus R3, S3 plus R5 minus R6 equals zero. So now we need to identify knowns, unknowns, inputs, constraints. Well, again, no constraints here because all of the links are binary. So we'll just go for knowns, unknowns, and inputs. So known, everything that doesn't change. So that's gonna be basically every link length, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, and then what angles are static? Well, theta four, theta five, and theta six are all part of the ground, so their angles don't change. Theta four, theta five, theta six. So now for unknowns, those are the things that do change. So that would be theta one, theta two, theta three. then one of those gets to be the input. So on here, this is a mechanism 
um, because it's not actuated. The person who's using the elliptical runner has to actually actuate it. Whereas that dump truck is a machine because it has that cylinder that actuates it. So as far as choosing the input, we need to choose it from among the unknowns, but it doesn't really matter which one we choose uh, because although the person's making it move, they're not quite directly controlling the angle of anything, but we could say probably since they stand on the pedals, the closest thing is theta two. So we'll go with theta two being the input. So that is how you do vector loop diagram and equation derivation for two real life mechanisms and machines.